Hey everyone, greetings from Brno. Greetings from sunny Brno on this beautiful Sunday. Um, it actually snowed here a few days ago, and so uh, that snow is gone. The sun is finally warming some things up. Weather here has not been great, uh, I must say. It's been actually quite depressing, so it's a nice change to see the sun today. Um, I have been locked up in my house for the past 48 hours reading this book, reading this book, referencing this book, um, in preparations for the WSET diploma. So I really needed a break today. I needed a red wine break, if you know what I mean, um, on this really beautiful Sunday here in the Czech Republic. Um, I wanted to do another red wine episode to kind of defy the reputation that Moravia is strictly a white wine region. It's not. There are beautiful red wines in this region. You just have to do a little digging, but once you find them, I think you'll be quite surprised at the quality levels. So jumping into it today, I am really excited to show one winery that I have been meaning to try for the past eight months and I just haven't, but never too late, right? So starting off today, I am excited to feature Josef Valerac's Cabernet Franc. So I bet you didn't think Cabernet Franc grew here in South Moravia, but it does and it's beautiful. Um, Josef Valerac is the patriarch of the family, shares the name with his son, also named Josef, who I met at a few wine competitions. Um, Joseph Valerac started his, wine, his family winery in 1990, right after the fall of the Iron Curtain. Um, he was the co-founder and chairman of the Czech Wine Association. He has won awards at the Concours Mondial de Bruxelles, at the Lyon Wine Competition in France. Um, he is a world-class winemaker. He's one of the only Czech winemakers to take home this award from Lyon. So representing South Moravia to the fullest, for sure. Um, his son, Josef, in addition to helping his father with the winemaking, he's actually a politician in the European Parliament as well. And his goal is to protect the winemaker's rights and from coming from the agricultural perspective. Um, so he is quite influential despite his young age. He's in his 30s and he is quite active on the political scene, really in trying to protect those winemakers and protect their livelihoods. So um, in addition to being a world-class winemaker, they are really moving and shaking things here in the Czech Republic. Um, so they farm about 20 hectares uh, in Velke Pavlovica, where they make this beautiful Cabernet Franc. Um, Cabernet Franc, to be quite honest, is, is really a top grape for me. It grows in Bordeaux and it's used in their blends uh, in addition with Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. Cabernet Franc is a major player um, as well as Petit Verdot and Malbec, but Cabernet Franc is, is really has a stronghold in Bordeaux. Um, in addition, it's grown in the Loire Valley and some of my most favorite wines from Saumur Champigny, from Chinon and Bourgogne and Saint Nicolas de Bourgogne are made of Cabernet Franc. Um, but here in South Moravia, I was really surprised to see it from Mr. Valirac, and it is so delicious. So I'm gonna jump right into it. This wine, uh, like I said, is a 2012. I was a bit nervous, a bit trepidatious, thinking that it might be kind of old, but this wine is super fruity and juicy. So holding it up in the glass, um, this wine has a more of a garnet color to it with the, almost that slight tawny edge is starting to appear because of the bottle age. I mean, the wine's almost eight years old. This was the youngest vintage I saw at the wine shop. Um, Mr. Valerac sells exclusively to small shops. You will not find this wine in a supermarket. Um, I picked it up at Moravska Bankovin where they carry a bunch of their wines. But this was the youngest vintage I saw on their shelf. Um, whether or not there is a more recent vintage, I don't know, but I don't think so. I think this is their current release. Um, so like I said, this wine is not super extracted. This wine is about a medium concentration, um, leaning again on that rim towards a slightly brickish kind of tawny color. Let's give it a smell. 
This wine is so fruity. Um, it is just berry fruited and plummy. Lots of strawberry, blackberry, even, even a little bit of a blueberry note. Kind of like a fresh black plum as well, but very fruity nose. Slight pencil shaving, which I love from Cabernet Franc, particularly from the Loire. It does get picked up on this nose as well. But the, the alcohol is really in balance. You're looking at a 12% alcohol wine. This is not a highly extracted, manipulated wine. This is just pure and simple Cabernet Franc. Let's give it a taste. Wow. It's just beautiful concentration, but medium body, medium to medium plus acidity, quite low in tannin. I would put it at medium minus. It's, it's really not dry at all. It's really quite fruity and juicy, like eating just really ripe strawberries um, that have just been kind of macerating a little bit. There's a slight Kirsch cherry note as well. A little bit of vanilla, but it's not this, this vanilla balm. It's, it's really just juicy and pleasant and medium plus acidity. Um, this wine really can use some, some roasted mushrooms with it. I think it would be great. Um, Cabernet Franc, like I said, is, is really one of my favorite grape varietals. I love that, that kind of berry fruit note that you get to it. These are wines that are not overly tannic or really high in alcohol, typically. Um, some of my favorite examples actually come from the US, uh, as well as Loire Valley, of course, but Virginia makes beautiful Cabernet Franc, as does New York State. Um, this is a grape that can grow in a moderate climate, but again, very surprised to see it here. I have not seen anyone else uh, growing 100% Cabernet Franc here in South Moravia, so pretty cool to find these little gems. Uh, sitting on the shelf of a wine shop about 10 minute walk from my house. So it does not get easier. Um, so perfect for me uh, as a wine lover. Jumping into the next wine. I also picked this bottle up at Moravska Banka Vin. Um, this is from Tansberg Winery from Mikulov. So as opposed to the Valorak, which is from Velke Pavlovica, this wine is from Mikulov, a different wine region. There are four in total in South Moravia. This is being one of the four. Uh, Mikulov is one of the oldest wine regions. Um, it was really the center of commerce in the 14th century. Tansberg Winery has been around for about 20 years. Um, they have a beautiful hotel. If you're ever in the Mikulov area looking to stay overnight or even for a nice dinner, um, their winery is separate from the hotel. Uh, I had the wonderful opportunity to visit over the summer with my friend Mike um, and we got to taste a bunch of their wine, but I was really blown away by this Maharal. Um, so this is their Bordeaux style blend. So this is 45% Cabernet Sauvignon, 45% Merlot, and 15, oh, excuse me, 10% Frankovka. Um, so Frankovka meaning Blaufrankisch. So as opposed to a typical Bordeaux varietal with Cabernet Franc, you've got Frankovka in its place. Um, Tensburg Winery, like I said, has been around for about 20 years. They make really exceptional mineral-driven wines in the Mikulov region. This particular one is uh, from the Turold plot, uh, which is known for its sunnier slopes, hence the red wine being grown there or the red grapes being grown on that particular slope. So their Maharal, this is a 2015. The wine sits at about 13.5% alcohol, so a bit higher in alcohol, a bit more in concentration than the previous. So looking at the color here, it is dark. Um, this wine, I cannot see a thing through it. Uh, this wine is quite extracted, is also unfiltered, hence that, that, uh, that darkness in the core of the color. It's really dark, dark ruby, um, leaning really towards Gosh, even a dark purple on the inside. Um, the slight ruby rim kind of comes out a little bit, but this is a wine that is a bit more deep, a bit more concentrated. Um, it does also see one year in new French Barrique. So let's give it a smell. So this wine is much more black fruited, more of that Kirsch cherry, black cherry, 
um, vanilla, slight cocoa notes to it as well, kind of like espresso bean. But the alcohol is, is slightly higher for sure on the nose, but it's not this punch you in the face style that um, is quite popular. I know back in the US, this one is a little bit more tamed down. Let's give it a taste. Certainly more concentrated. About medium, medium plus tannins. This one is, is quite dry. Um, my guess also those tannins, in addition to coming from the grapes, is also influenced by that one year of new French barrique. Um, medium to medium plus acidity. It's pretty pleasant though. But more earthy, more of that dark cocoa on the palate, as opposed to that really fresh fruited nose from the Cabernet Franc. This is much deeper wine, longer finish as well. Um, a little bit more, definitely more tannin on, on the on the front palate um, and slightly higher acidity too. But exceptional styles of winemaking here in South Moravia, um, either from Mikulov from Tensburg Winery or from uh, Josef Falerak from uh, Velke Pavlovica. Whenever people tell me just stay with the white wines in South Moravia, I always tell them there are red wines here and they're delicious. Like I said, you just have to do a little digging. Um, certainly going to your respected winemakers like these uh, from Tensburg and Mr. Falerak. Uh, I am never disappointed. These wines are always so beautiful, so well made, very well crafted. Small wineries too. Um, so you guys have to get on your plane and come visit me here in Brno so we can come taste all these delicious red wines of the region. Um, so that being said, I am going to enjoy a little bit more of this Cabernet Franc before attacking these books again. So cheers to you, thank you for watching. Cheers to Cabernet Franc, which I never knew grew here in South Moravia. Cheers to Tensburg Winery as well for creating a beautiful cuvee. And I hope everyone enjoys their beautiful Sunday here in Brno. Cheers. <laughs>